Well, it's a father-son affair today here at Takedown. Welcome, everybody. I'm Scott Casper, jumping into the Nike hot seat today, a father-son combo. They're at Perry High School in uh, Ohio, and uh, joining us first is a legend in his own right, a 1988 soul bronze medalist, a young man who at the time you know, ran away with uh, not just uh, the then Big 12, but it was then Big 8, I should say. He earned three NCAA championships, all the while amassing a record of 117.20 and one at 150 pounds. And he's not too far from that weight today. Nate Carr <laughs> joins us. Nate, how are you? Uh, just fine, Scott. It's always good to talk to you, always good to see you and work with you. Well, buddy, you know, we have such a good time, you and I and, and uh, uh, Wade Chalice at right. the NCAAs during during, uh, during the uh, semifinals preview show. Not quite clear if we're going to get it done this year, but uh, surely we'll return back to action next year. Let's talk a bit about wrestling as a whole. This last weekend, the University of Iowa invited the Cowboys of Oklahoma State to come in, and uh, it was number one versus number four, and it was uh, the Hawkeyes who upset that number one team. What were your thoughts uh, in seeing the pictures, seeing some of the video, perhaps watching the event? It was great. I, I like the, you know, just with the, the wrestling perspective and the intensity was awesome. And the crowd really reacted to the intensity, especially, I would say, traditional Hawkeye style. They wrestled tough. They hung in there. They kept pressure on the guys, even the guys that won for Oklahoma State. You know, the guys from Iowa were coming back on them. And so I thought Iowa represented themselves well and Definitely, they should be a national contender for sure. Wherever you are seems to be the heartbeat of wrestling. Well, right now, uh, Iowa, Ohio, uh, Pennsylvania, Virginia. Um, we have so many great states where collegiate wrestling is doing well. And then, of course, we have the states where high school wrestling is just uh, on a roll. What are you seeing uh, there in Ohio? Oh, well, Ohio just comes, just a lot of history. It's always been one of the top states for sure. It's one of the most competitive states when it comes to wrestling, not to mention it's very impressive uh, what Tom Ryan is doing at Ohio State. Your son, Nate Carr Jr., of course, always a uh, always a inspiration to so many, as you've been. Now you have another son who's, who's wrestling uh, and doing quite well, I might add. And that's David. What can you tell us about David? We're going to be talking to him shortly, but from a coach's perspective and a parent's perspective. Yeah, well, the, uh, definitely David is a leader. And he's, he hasn't been wrestling a long time, really, you know, six years. But it's really put in the time, and he loves the sport. He's a student of the sport. I mean, there's no where we go where he's not taking notes on three things he needs to improve on three things that he's done well, even in the middle of practice, he's pull, pulling out his phone, uh, taking notes, always making adjustments, always trying to improve himself. And that's what I, I really like. I like that about him. And he's, he's a leader. He's a helper. Anybody that's down, anybody that needs to be picked up, he seems to be that type of guy that's going to come alongside. Even as a sophomore, he's ranked fourth in the country, a two-time state champ already. A Super 32 champ, took second at the Field of Cadet World Team Trials. Um, aside from his record, which is substantial, uh, he's got to be one of those guys that every coach in the country is keeping a good, sharp eye on. Yeah, so, yeah, there's been a lot of coaches definitely interested, looking, pursuing, however you want to say it. <laughs> yes. Is it is it uh, is it changed since you were an athlete? Is it changed since since Nate was being recruited? Yeah, I, I think the technology part of it. You know, um, you know, people can text and do different things, and I, I think that part of it, they have different ways of connecting with the students, and that's interesting. No, I think it's interesting. Absolutely interesting. I think it's a, it, it's for sure it's a new world, just the way they make contact. And, uh, I mean, the Instagram. I mean, there's just so many things that they could use to communicate to a young athlete that uh, we're interested. So he sits on a record right now, of, and correct me if I'm wrong, Coach, but uh, 
uh, 50, and 9 is 2 is 60. So you pay 109 and uh, 3 over two seasons. Is that fair? Yeah, that sounds correct. I haven't really looked at it, but yeah, sounds correct. That's, uh, that's tremendous. It's in many ways mirroring your performance. Uh, you know, he's only one of your kids, but uh, he seems to be right on track following in your footsteps. Yeah, you know, again, he, he loves wrestling. And I, I think that's the biggest part. I always say that you have to love wrestling more than winning. And then eventually I think you'll get some wins, whether as a coach or athlete. And and I will ask you uh, the obvious question here in a moment, but he's the youngest, right? Yes, he is. So is it difficult to, to, to coach your kid, um, especially when you're coaching others? Yeah, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, I, I really look at it as I'm there to produce champions, to help the guys be their best, both, you know, in, in the classroom and on the mat. And I just look at it like that. I mean, I think he wants me in his corner if he wants me in his corner and that's going to help push him and help him to reach his potential. Then I'm willing to do that. If he wants me to uh, stay in the background, I'm willing to do that. I think coaching is just really coming alongside, helping those guys achieve their goals. And I think with the coach's experience, uh, uh, you shed light on, you know, some of the strategies that they need to develop to win. Strategies and and strategies in life, right? That's right. That's right. No strategy, no victory. That's what I'm talking about. (laughs) (laughs) Nate Carr joins us, uh, one of my great partners, a guy I really, truly enjoy working with. And most of that is because he's just a real likable guy. On the other hand, he also has an incredible knowledge of this sport. Uh, We got to see some new rules employed at the All-Star Classic this year. Uh, Nate, we saw a three-point takedown. What was your thought on a three-point takedown? Yeah, I, I thought it was actually. I like. I like it. If I'm wrestling, I'm the takedown guy, so I'm definitely not against it. I, I think that's where all the action is, you know. And they're really rewarding that guy when they're standing in neutral, you know, for getting that takedown. And uh, it gives them a little bit of edge, especially when you, you know, have the riding time. People have questions about that. You know, you know, just holding the guy down to get that point. Uh, but I think the takedown to throw an extra point in there is not bad. I I like it. Uh, seeing, you know, I've always thought why, um, why give away half your point if you're gonna let the guy up? Why why give right. away half your performance? <laughs> it didn't make any sense. <laughs> That's right. So now you know you get it. There's a benefit, and I think you know that that's where a lot of wrestling is on the feet. You know. And, uh, you know, the guy that's on the bot on the top that's really good, he gets rewarded as well. Mm. Nate Carr obviously is a, uh, a technician. Uh, it, some say that it does not run in families. The Carr family, I think, is uh, you know, a perfect example of that not being right. In other words, it flies in the face of uh, that... that uh, um, that it's not in the genes. I think it is. I think a good quality athlete can surely uh, look to his father or look to his mother and uh, look for the example and then uh, try to capitalize on it. Nate, yeah, let's talk about yeah. the, the college season. We'll head to New York for the for the uh, uh, the grand finale, as it were. It'll take place in March at, at Madison Square Garden. What are your thoughts about uh, college wrestling going to the big city with bright lights? Oh, it's, it's going to be exciting now. I have never been to an NCAA tournament that has not been exciting. Great stories always seem to culminate culminate there at the national championships. And it's really going to be exciting. Penn State has a tough team. Ohio State has a tough team. I mean, North Carolina, North Carolina State. I mean, there seems to be a nice balance now of tough wrestlers just coming from all over Cornell. You know, there's going to it's going to be it's going to be a good race. It's going to be a good race for Pat, sure. Pat Papalizio, we had a chance to go one-on-one with Pat yesterday uh, for television. And I will tell you this, um, uh, he has uh, some surprises in the closet. Uh, that <laughs> wrestling room is packed. He's uh, well, The team is well coached. Great support from the athletic director on down. Um, and, and that's the kind of thing that the South, if the South is truly going to rise again, and I believe it will, 
um, and I believe it will be at a school like NC State or North Carolina. That's uh, right. If we're lucky and Georgia Tech adds the sport back or Georgia. That'd be awesome. It would be. And and that's how we show these athletic directors it's not just a valuable sport, it's a must-have sport. That's right. Mm-hmm. I, I, definitely, I definitely agree. I think wrestlers are some of the, you know, I think they represent well this great sport of ours as citizens uh, in this great country of ours as well. We're talking with uh, Nate Carr. I'm going to ask Nate to invite his son in. Would you give up your chair for David? Yes. Hold on one minute. That's what it's about. (laughs) It's a positive state of mind that you have to have. And jumping into the Nike hot seat is a young man that is very positive, and that's David Carr. He joins us now from uh, school in Perry High, or Perry High School. It's Maslin Perry High in Canton, Ohio. No, Maslin, Ohio. What is it? Maslin. Maslin, Ohio. Okay, thank you. I, I did say it wrong, didn't I? Maslin Perry High School in Canton, Ohio. No. Okay, so first no, of all. No, it's, it's, it's Perry High School in Maslin, Ohio. Perry High School in Maslin, Ohio. Yes. Okay. I'm glad we got all that worked out. Sadly, we're out of time now, David. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> How is your sophomore year going? Uh, it's going pretty good. I'm just uh, doing some, just working out with the guys and getting all my grades turned in and stuff like that. And well, just, it's going pretty good, though. Let's talk a little bit about what you're studying. What are you strong in uh, academically? Hmm. English, I'm strong, like English and history. English uh, and history, okay. Yeah. And so what, are, what are your weak points? Math, I'm really bad at math. <laughs> hmm, yeah, it's kind of, kind of mine as well. That was absolutely my, my <laughs> weak, weakness as well. Well, you're obviously so good at adding, adding wins, yeah. that is. <laughs> and uh, that's pretty cool. And at Perry High School there, you've done a great job. Uh, you're ranked fourth in the country right now. Some have you as high as third. Uh, that comes from a two-time state champion level performance in your first two years, your Super 32 championship. Uh, you were second at the FIDA Cadet World Team Trials. So I think you know what you needed to work on there. Yeah. Uh, and And your overall record right now is stunning. You have three losses to your credit. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit about having your, your father coach you. It's a really cool experience. You know, having them be the head coach is, you know, it's really cool. Just having them really push me and, and watch you. I think it's cool to see, see him watch me develop into a wrestler and really be my best. When you think of your family, there's plenty of people around that dining room table. Yeah. And... <laughs> At any given time, a wrestling match could break out. <laughs> we like Thanksgiving is going to be crazy because I know we're going to be fighting over the food and joking and talking about old stories and stuff. Now, it, does, does your dad inspire you? Does do your brothers and sisters inspire you? Your mom? Where does inspiration come from for you? I really want to be the best and seeing what my dad's been able to accomplish and my uncles, you know, seeing what they can accomplish really, that's. You know, the sky's the limit for me because I know I can accomplish just as much. David Carr, yeah. guest in the Nike hot seat today. Uh, what kind of wrestling shoes do you wear? I wear I wear aggressors, so ASICS aggressor ones. Okay. Those and, are the ones you feel you perform best in? Yeah. All right. I like Adidas too, but okay. <laughs> I like right. Adidas, but aggressors is what I wear. All right. Everybody's got to have a favorite. So your dad and I talked a little bit about recruiting. Um, that while the heat, you may be starting to feel it a little bit. Um, and I got to believe you are, given your, your stature uh, in the country, given your skills. Uh, are you prepared for that process to really heat up? Yeah, I think I'm ready for it. Okay. If I was to ask you right now where you might be leaning, is there a school you'd like to go to? There's like, there's a few I have in mind, but none really. I'm like leaning towards like heavier than the other. 
because wrestling at the collegiate level is a whole different ball game, number one, whole different wrestling. But uh, then there's also the academic pursuit. So you have to have a an idea, anyway, of what you might be going to school for. Sometimes yeah. that'll change halfway through the process. It did for me. But um, if you could say you want to go to school for, what would you be going to school for? Uh, business, maybe. Business? Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. A, a good business degree can be worth its weight in gold. Yeah. Mm. Now, you're the youngest of your... Um, of your family, there are three brothers and three sisters, and you're the youngest. Yeah. And if if my math serves me right, you're 17. 16. 16 years old. See, every time you and I talk, and we talked last night on the phone, mm-hmm. I, I feel like I'm talking to somebody that's much more mature, much older than you are. And that's, a, that's amazing to me. Is that is that come from conversations with your dad or what? Conversations with my dad, yeah. Mm. We have a lot of conversations just... A lot of wrestling talk. Well, he's a good man to talk with. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Have you ever gone back and watched any of his matches on video? Oh, yeah. I watched some of his matches on YouTube. Pretty good guy, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Pretty slick. Really strong and really fast. Well, the, whole, the whole car family is really slick and fast. <laughs> yeah. What's your ultimate goal in wrestling? Be four-time NCAA champ and Olympic champion. I'm glad you added Olympic champion in there. Too many people stop at, at one goal, and then they forget there's a whole nother horizon. Does that seem fair? Yeah. So I understand that you have Olympic aspirations as well. It's obvious you've already been uh, performing uh, and performing well at the FIA Cadet World Team Trials. What's next for you internationally? Um, I really want to make a world team and go overseas and wrestle those guys and just kind of get a feel. So that's pretty much, that's the biggest goal I kind of have after wrestling season. Just that's what I'm going to focus on. Okay. Well, you get the final word on the interview today. Not your dad. You get the final word. What do you want to tell the fans of the Carr family? Hmm. It is Thanksgiving. We're, we're cresting up on Christmas. Yeah. So, um, just enjoy, enjoy, just enjoy life and kind of be thankful. Uh, just give all glory to God and and just just be thankful during this time. Knocking it out of the park is David Carr in the Nike hot seat today. David, thanks for your time, bud. Best to your whole family, all of them. When you all gather and, and get together and after the prayer, remind everybody that, after all, this is wrestling and the Carr family has such a unique placement in its history, and we appreciate that. Thanks, Scott. You bet. David Carr has been our guest in the Nike hot seat today. His father was as well, Nate Carr, and a great friend of mine over the years. I'm just so lucky to have him, and I hope he feels the same way. I hope you've enjoyed the interviews with these two today, a father-son affair. That's how we stylized it, and by gosh, they didn't let us down. David and Nate Carr. Thanks for watching, everybody.